Join me on an adventure to Lightning Ridge, where we see some tourist spots and some unbelievable opal. A ridiculous gem. See the red on that? Amazing. You know, they say good things come to those who wait. Well, I'm about to wait nine hours till I get to one of my favourite places in the world. That's Lightning Ridge. It's nine hours drive and it's really helpful to have somebody else help you with the driving. Tamika's come along for the ride. And with a lot of laughs, a lot of talking, a lot of rubbish from me, it didn't take that long before we got close. But we still weren't there. And then we thought we got close. And then we still weren't there. It's a really, really long drive. And things like emus, or Stanley the emu, is really nice to break up the whole trip. And with the first signs of opal diggings, it meant we were close. We were close to the best place in the world, Lightning Ridge. Man, it's good to be back. But it looks like they've had rain. Have the miners been out to mine? I'm in Lightning Ridge this time, a uh, different type of a video. I'm on a mission to uh, find a beautiful, beautiful red on black gem and an awesome top crystal. So it's a bit of a hard ask to just come up and say, I want this and I want that in Lightning Ridge nowadays. There's not enough opal coming out of the ground to be able to do that, but that is my goal. So if I do, I'm going to be very happy. I'll show you a bit of the tourist area around here as well. And um, you can maybe go and see it yourself one day when you come, but I hope you enjoy the journey. Let's go. Lightning Ridge is full of creative and quirky people. I guess you gotta be quirky if you love opal because it's not a diamond. It's something very different, very unique, just like us quirky people. And nobody's more quirky and talented than Ron Canlan who created the Black Hand many years ago. Ron's talent of mining opal was not that successful. So one day he pulled out a butter knife and started carving in the walls and realized he had a talent. So we're underground and this is where Ron has carved right through a labyrinth of a whole opal mine that he's mined years ago. And um, the guy is so creative. Come and check this out, it's pretty amazing. Every room has a different genre um, of what he's decided to carve. And Ron started carving some weird and amazing things. And from there, he was only limited to his imagination, which was some pretty weird and wonderful things. You ever seen a dinosaur with the seven dwarfs sitting on top? Or Michael Jackson needing a bathroom visit? Walk like an Egyptian. So there's all sorts of things, even Rolf Harris. We zoomed ahead to the shop underground, where I met my good old friend Daryl Mills. Daryl I've known for years, and he took us down into the working mine to explain to us exactly how opal is formed. Listen very carefully. So those silica ingredients actually dissolve with acids and they become a liquid or a gel, something that actually make them mobile through the sandstone. Sandstone's porous and it also has cracks in it. So that actually get, makes its way down into what we call the opal clay level. So that's satisfying the first condition where the ingredients come from. But having the ingredients, now you actually need them to sit somewhere long enough and if all of the prevailing conditions are just correct, it has a chance to form into a natural stable form of glass is what we call opal. So in these clay levels, which are the old sedimentary deposits in this particular area of old freshwater billabongs and creeks uh, and streams millions of years ago. We know that by the fossil records in them. They were originally organic matter. So basically, eventually, the inland sea dried out, so did all of these water bodies. This is the line. You can actually see a very linear intercept in the course of history where they dried out. 
they eventually compressed into these sedimentary clays and then for millions of years the sandstone, the sand blew in and formed into sedimentary sandstones. So what's notable, when those ingredients get down, they're looking for a gap or cavity to fill up. So that happens in one of two ways at Lightning Ridge. It gets into a seam or crack, um, it can be vertical or horizontal on the intercept of the sandstone and the clay. If it fills that up and forms into a stable form of opal, we call that seam opal. If it gets further down to any nodules or fossil record submerged in the clay, they've since disintegrated, since the clay dried out, and that cavity, if all the conditions are right and that ingredients fill up that cavity, basically the cavity is like, a, in some cases, like a dental precision mold because these clays are very fine grained. And then if you cast it in glass, you get a very good relief image of that. So in the ideal conditions, we get a perfect casting out of natural oak. So that's what Lightning Ridge is unique for. Um, if it forms into the cracks, we call it seam. If it forms into the nodules or, or any void or cavity where there was a fossil record, we call them nobbies. They're just nodules submerged in the clay um, and they randomly appear and disappear. So that's what the old time miners were looking for. So they had the first condition is sandstone for the ingredients. The second was that we want opal bearing clays, a relatively impermeable membrane to trap that water and give it a chance to set into something stable. So if anyone knows about dam building, uh, they like the bottom of dams uh, with a uh, clay that's basically a relatively impermeable membrane stops the water leaching out of fresh cut dams. If they cut those dams over on the coast without doing that or putting bentite or something in the bottom of it, uh, that actually leaches out and they lose all their water. So, and we've seen quite a few of those over the years. So that's basically what the, the old time miners actually set up for us. Now when they did get down, if they satisfied the three conditions, um, which is, and the third one being, you actually want to see opal um, forming in the clay. By opal we mean it doesn't have to be a gemstone, it just has to be a stable form of the natural glass. That can be in white, it can be clear like window glass, it can be grey, it can be black. Uh, those ones we actually call potch, it's basically common opal, it has none of the bright colours we associate with opal. But if it does turn to a gemstone, um, that's all good and well, but it's impossible to tell because they're literally the same ingredients that they've just set slightly differently. So, and that's why it's very hard to detect and prospect for opal because silica is one of the most abundant minerals on the planet and merely forming opal doesn't mean it's going to turn to a gemstone because they're the exact same ingredients, they've just set slightly differently. So how we explain that to the average person, it's just an anecdotal way. Uh, sponge cake is a really good example. You can give two people the same ingredients for a sponge cake, you can give them the same oven and cooking facilities, and two of them with the same ingredients will get varying results. One might just have a temperature differential or one little thing different, that will actually flop. The other one will rise perfectly and be a classic traditional sponge cake. So nature's the same. Two pieces can form directly beside each other in what you would think were constant conditions. One can be just a colourless piece of potch that has no real commercial value. The other one can be a $20,000 carat gemstone um, and there's no rhyme or reason. Scientists haven't really worked it out. So they know the end result but they don't know all the variable factors that actually change that and change the internal structure of those silica spheres during the setting process. So, and if they did, we'd probably all be in trouble because then they'd be able to simulate it and we'd all be broke. The mine tour in the Black Hand is very educational and a must do. How you doing? I've been looking around here for some opal and just wondering, you seen any? Could be some rain around soon, hey. So my name's Justin. Do you know the opal hunters? I'd love to meet an opal hunter. Are you an opal hunter? You look like Bush Tucker Man. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Isn't that nice? Everyone waves. Everyone waves when they're around here. So friendly. So I'm going to go look for some opal then, if you can't tell me. I might go to the opal bin and see my friend Justine. She's down there on the main street. She's got a good opal shop. Maybe she's got some for sale. Good chat with you, dude. Nice to meet you. And um, yeah, and um, good on you, mate. Catch up. From the unfriendly to the very friendly, we visit Justine. She owns the opal bin. She's a really great friend and we've probably been in opal about the same amount of time. So if you're looking to go and buy an opal in Lightning Ridge, go and see Justine and she'll look after you. But one thing she's got that nobody else has is the Gemfish IF1. Go and see her and get yourself one if you're up in Lightning Ridge.
From the Opal shop to the Opal mine, we visit Dave and his good old gouging claim. A gouging claim is where you go in with a pick and you find your opal without having to dig too much dirt. And Dave was more than happy to see us and show us around and see where he's up to and if he's got any opal to sell. It's been a fair bit of work down here since last time we were here, but Dave's here to show me some opal, some pretty special stuff. The opal that Dave currently has is not his, well it's partly not his, he's in partnership with someone else with these beautiful gems, check them out. After a little to and froing, I managed to be able to own them. And wow, what a gem to own. I can't wait to recut it. But check this thing out. It looks clean as a whistle. It's an actual shell. A fossilized shell that is solid opal and solid 3D color on color crystal opal. It's what my dreams are made of. And one of the most underrated gems on the planet. And there precludes my trip to Lightning Ridge. And you know what? I can't wait to get back and show my son the opal I bought and teach him what I know. He couldn't come on this trip because he had a broken back. So let's go home to the workshop and have a look at what we got. Hey buddy. How you doing? Good. It was such a cool trip. I can't wait to show you. Oh, I've been hanging out to show you this this gem. Check it out. <clears throat> what would you do with it? Oh, it's a bit wonky right now, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's a gorgeous gem. Mm -hmm. I think that I think it can be improved. Hopefully you could roll the dome on it. Yeah, that's just, what my plan is. Just be worried about that sand on the back. I'm not worried about the sand, it doesn't show up from the front, so that's all right. Fair enough. But I, I do believe we can get a better a better looking dome than it is, so I'm really excited. The colour's nuts on it. What, what's that, um, that pinky colour, what do you call that again? Don't know. Uh, pigeon blood red. Oh, it's, it's yeah, it's it'll, a dark red is pigeon blood, is really. But this is the piece that I get excited about. Oh yeah, that's so sick. Is that a shell? Yep. So it's a fossil, that's pretty cool. It's a fossil, and look at that color. What does it remind you of? Some of like your collection stones that belong to Poppy. Yes, yep. Uh, Which I'm is dad's sucker. old man. Yeah, my dad, your grandfather. Yeah, so I can't wait to cut that crystal because it's going to be amazing. That 3D colour on colour, clean as a whistle. There's nothing in it, No, that's clean crazy. as a whistle. It's so good. So we're going to make a video out of that today, cutting it. What do you reckon? Oh, I look forward to that. That's going to be incredible. Be amazing, Jim. It's going to be nuts. So what have you done while I was away? I got a bit of, a bit oh. of stuff that I've cut. Oh wow, you did too. Wow, your shapes are coming along so well, dude. Very, very nice. Except for one of them. Oh, that one's a bit wonky. No, no, no that, one's, that one's good compared <laughs> to one of the others. Oh, really? I'm actually not sure how it slipped in there. It's not even in there, actually. I think it got taken out. Oh, that one's a little bit out. That could do with a bit uh, better shape. Yeah, but very, very good. And the polishes look quite, quite nice. What you are getting quite quickly is the domes. You're getting the polish down the domes, which mm. is really important because that's the, probably the hardest part is getting those domes. Yeah. Oh, well done. Well, Thank you. what an adventure. Yeah, well, it looks um, like you got some pretty nice stuff. Yes, gorgeous gems. We've got a couple of others there as well, but mm. you know, they're the two main beautiful gems. But, um, join nice. us next week for uh, 
cutting of this absolutely cracking crystal gem. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Take care guys.